Hello everyone, hope this finds you well. A little while ago I did a couple of messages based on John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress and it's such a significant work. I'd like to do a couple more messages um, but before we get into today's subject I just want to give you a very brief background. John Bunyan was born into a very turbulent times in, the, in England. He, uh, he came from Bedford and uh, on St. Peter's Green in Bedford, you'll see a statue of him. The turbulence was with the monarchy and with the parliamentarians at the time. Charles I uh, was in great dispute. And uh, at the age of 16, John Bunyan joined up to fight against the royalists. There was... Um, uh, after this time of unrest... Um, Cromwell came to power and uh, John Bunyan in 1650 got married and he had his first child, Mary, who sadly was born blind. This kind of led to a um, spiritual searching time for John Bunyan and he went through this period of time um, just convicted of his own sinfulness in the sight of God. One day he felt he heard God asking him, Wilt thou leave thy sins and go to heaven, or wilt thou have thy sins and go to hell? He describes this time as his dark night of the soul, and finally in 1653 he joins a, an independent church under a pastor called John Gifford. And this man was an incredible influence on him and helped him to find Jesus, give his life to Jesus, and go on to become a powerful Puritan preacher himself. In 1660, Cromwell's protectorate ended and control went back to the monarchy. And preachers not ordained in the Church of England were outlawed. The Anglican Church was used by royalists to suppress religious freedom. And Bunyan was imprisoned twice, the first time in 1661 for 12 years. And it's during this period that he wrote most of his, his well-known works, including Pilgrim's Progress. So there's a brief background, and it helps us to understand the context of the book and the main character's journey a little. Now, we've called him Christian, the main character, but his name actually, uh, early on in the book, we, we learn is Graceless. I want to focus in today on chapter 9 and this is a, a magnificent point in the book uh, where it's, which is called The Place of Deliverance. It says, I saw in my dream a highway fenced in on both sides with a wall and that wall was called salvation. Therefore, burden, Christian ran up this way though not without great difficulty because of the great load that was on his back. So he ran in this direction until he came a place, to a place where the way ascended up a small hill and at the top stood a cross, while below it was a sepulchre, a sepulchre meaning stone tomb. As he came to the cross, his burden fell off his back then it continued to tumble down the hill until it fell into the mouth of the sepulchre and it was seen no more. Christian immediately becomes light and filled with joy. He is amazed at the power of the cross in making his burden light. He is soon met by three shining ones who each have something to offer him. The first one announces that his sins are now forgiven. The second one strips him of his rags and the clothes that he was wearing and gives him a change of raiment. The third sets out, uh, sets a mark on his forehead and gives him a scroll with a seal on it to show at the entrance to the celestial city. Celestial city, of course, means heaven. And what uh, Bunyan's doing in this, all the way through the book, but here he's drawing on certain scriptures. Um, Zechariah 3, 4 is Zechariah's vision of Joshua. And um, uh, in chapter 3, 
of Zechariah. He has this vision of Joshua with Satan standing at his side accusing him, but um, he's given by an angel a new clothing, clothing of salvation. And he has fine garments put on, upon him. Uh, and we can also uh, identify here in uh, Ephesians 1.13, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. And this is the seal he uh, says here to show at the celestial city. Once you have this seal, you have uh, the Holy Spirit with you and it gives you access to the celestial city or heaven. So there's some things I want you to just draw from this part in the message of Pilgrim's Progress. The cross is such a powerful symbol in the Christian's life. It means that all our sins are forgiven us. All our sin is dealt with on the cross. And the burden of our sin rolls away. It's seen no more. And God sees it no more. So if you've been tempted to be go back into certain sinful behaviours, I just call on you to ask God to forgive you, to allow that burden to roll away from you and not uh, confine you, not obstruct you any longer. We're not to live in sin any longer. We're to allow God to take it from us. And then our joy comes back, our peace comes back, our union with God. There's nothing between us and God anymore. So, the cross has done it all. What a marvellous saviour that we have. How glorious Jesus is that we are in relationship with him. We are in community of believers. Hallelujah.